Love is amazing, His grace is bringing you every day And if you ask me, you receive abundantly, abundantly in his favor Favor, 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 favor Good afternoon, Celebration Church Johannesburg Welcome uh, to The Pulse um, And uh, today we, we're just looking at uh, a few points and uh, concepts that we learned And how they apply to our lives, particularly uh, from this series that we've just come out of uh, the series about the Holy Spirit. Uh, so we're just going to have a chat um, over the next hour or so. Um, my name is Moses, my beautiful wife, Shukom uh, Borero. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we trust that you find this session uh, really helpful uh, as much as uh, it is for us. Uh, well, so how did you find the series of the Holy Spirit? Series on the Holy Spirit, how did you find it? Okay, thank you so much, Moses. Um, this series has been very empowering and there was a lot of revelation that I got from learning about the Holy Spirit. Firstly being that he is not an it, he is a person and he is God. So that is very um, powerful to know that the Holy Spirit, you would call him Holy Spirit, but he is still God and he's always present with us. And you, how has it been for I quite, you? I quite like the way you um, put, in, put it across that he's not an it, he's a he, um, which puts him you know, into person. I think he also quite stressed a, a particular point where uh, he was saying we, particularly us as the, what's known as the charismatic um, Christians, we, we tend to refer him to as the Holy Ghost. And once you put the name Ghost there, it's another scary concept that comes, I mean, yeah, my, my memory of ghost ever since my child is not a good one, so the moment you say ghost, I, I really want to run away, so I certainly don't want to be known to a ghost, <laughs> but hey, uh, but he's there, he's a person, he's he, and he is God. Um, I was listening um, uh, to, I think it was Dr. McConney's message, um, in action, where he was talking about how if Jesus is the Son of God, and then he's gone. And again, you can then say also, if the Spirit or the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, mm -hmm. then the Holy Spirit is God. Yes, so, indeed. yeah, so he is God. And uh, that's, that's um, yeah. it, we must revere, we must have reverence for him as much as we have uh, for God the Father, yeah. as much as we have for God the Son. And we must just revere him you know, and honor him and worship him yes. as God, yes, because God. he actually is God. Yes. Well, um, I'm just going to jump quickly into something that Doc mentioned um, about us being empowered uh, by the Holy Spirit. I'm going to read Acts chapter 10, uh, verse 38. Um, let me find the verse here. Acts 10, 38. Um, common scripture says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. So Jesus Christ, uh, the Son of God, was anointed or was empowered for ministry. It says how um, God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And that anointing there, it's, it's an empowerment, if I can call it like that. So God empowered Jesus Christ of Nazareth by the Spirit or by, by, by anointing him with the Holy Spirit so that he could go about uh, doing good. And just this, um, I think it's it's quite key how Doc went ahead um, to us as Christians. How often we walk around and we feel we feel very disempowered. We True. disregard, yeah. and as a result, we end up uh, disempowered. We we disregard, and when you disregard, you also lose the benefits uh, that comes with what you would have gained had you regarded him uh, and taken up this empowerment that he gives. So um, even. Uh, even when it comes down to the things that we do in ministry, in church, yeah, it, 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 it expands families, it expands mm -hmm. businesses, it expands the, just the whole whole of life in general, how when we disregard that empowerment, if, if Jesus himself could not go into his ministry or go into the things that uh, God had sent him or the Father had sent him to do to accomplish, um, uh, he probably wouldn't have achieved it. You know, He needed the Holy Spirit to achieve. He needed the Holy Spirit to uh, so that he could do what we could, he could do, because that's what uh, empowered him. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think about that? 
I really like what you say about um, Christ being here on earth and that he he needed the Holy Spirit to empower him to do greater things. Um, even for us uh, as Christians, at times, I'm just adding it's what you're saying, at times we, we feel like we know because our brain, our brain is very powerful and it can create ideas that can put us in spaces where we never even thought of. But at the end of the day, we need to realize that even those ideas that we get come from somewhere. The Bible says that um, God knows even the thoughts that we have before we even think them. And he knows what we need to do before we even do it. So when we think that it is our own ability and our own power that is uh, moving us forward, then, then we are, it's in vain, you know. Um, we need to realize that we are, we have been empowered by the Holy Spirit to do what we need to do and more so in ministry for us to see the greater works that Christ said in his word for us to see the lost being saved for us to see all those things that we desire in the kingdom of God it is because of the Holy Spirit it's because of the Spirit of God that gives us the power to do what we need to do it's amazing yeah, interesting is that verse um, I think it's Zechariah 4 verse 6 a common verse in, in our circles uh, it talks about, it says, not by might nor by power. It says, this is the word mm. of God to Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by yes. my spirit, says the Lord. So that's how the things will happen, because he empowers you. Yeah. Uh, and I think we, one of the things I've noticed people, um, particularly in ministry, and um, and from my own experience as well, um, often when you engage or when you move without the Holy Spirit, when you do the things that you do, without the dependence on the Holy Spirit, it, it's as if you have to, put in, um, a, a, let me call it a greater amount of energy, so to speak. Yes. Um, you have to push things that mm -hmm. you oh, wouldn't nice. have ordinarily pushed had the Holy Spirit been there. You know, you would have, um, the Holy Spirit would have shown you something um, because he empowers you, he could have revealed something to you or how you need to do what you could have done um, and which would have made your task um, probably simpler, uh, so to speak. I, I find that particularly when uh, when Jesus, I, I, because the way the way Jesus just flowed in his ministry, if you read the Acts of the Gospel, I mean the, the Gospels, the four Gospels, how he just flowed in ministry, you can really see how um, just the presence of the Holy Spirit just makes that whole uh, ministry thing. It just simplifies the tasks to some extent. Uh, you don't have to struggle. You don't have to strive. You know, it's, it's, you, you end all strife. And you just depend, and you're able to rest. And the Holy Spirit, because you know, He is all knowing, like you said, you know, He, he is all knowing. So, because He's all knowing, He reveals things, He works with you, and He directs you as you should go. Mm. Um, and um, yeah, even things that you didn't think you could do, He empowers you um, to, to do those things, you know, He because he, he, it's no longer you, it's as if you are dependent on that. But actually, it actually is that you actually depend on a greater power, a greater source of knowledge. Uh, a greater, uh, I don't know what I could call it, a wealth of information. Um, yeah, somebody who knows um, what what you what need, who knows do. what you need to do, how yes. you need to do it, why you need to do it, your approach, um, etc., etc. It just makes uh, ministry perhaps, uh, not to call it lighter, but yeah, a little bit lighter because you're not working on your own or from your own stuff or from the way that he guides you. Yes. If we look back, or to this to Jesus life um, when you were talking about how his ministry was flowing I think one thing I also noticed a lot is that Jesus spent a lot of his time in prayer you know being empowered is not something that you know that you okay yes in the instant you may be empowered you know to do to to preach or to say a word of encouragement you know or to to, to pray for someone to be healed. But I believe that it's a constant um, dwelling in the presence of God that makes things flow as Christ's ministry was flowing. He spent a lot of time, he woke up early in the morning, left his disciples to go and take time to pray. A lot of times you read about his life where he, he, he just, you know, 
uh, moved away um, quietly to just to go and be in the presence of God. So I think that is also very important for us if we are to receive that power and and move in the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to spend time in prayer. You know, we've been encouraged uh, by Dr. McCon and Pastor Audrey, even as the teachings prior to the Holy Spirit, where he was talking a lot about prayer, even in the prayer school. He always in, is encouraging us to spend, make an appointment with God, have time set aside to pray. You know, it's not just an encouragement. It is what we are supposed to do. Christianity is a lifestyle. So if we are to move in the, empower, um, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we need to also spend time in prayer. I believe so. True, true, very true. And, and just to um, perhaps not... Um, not to, dis- but to divert a little bit because I think we might focus a lot on ministry. But you know, the, the Holy Spirit's empowerment uh, it, it encompasses di- even other areas of lives that um, would probably, um, you know, things like a career, things like a family, things like children. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm sure you know how difficult those three musketeers are um, to raise them, uh, just to speak to them, how to deal with them. Um, if, if 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 we can approach that empower, you know this uh, from that perspective way because he, he also empowers us and enables us to do this to raise children uh, just as I don't want to call it a simple task because <laughs> it's actually not um, uh, but uh, this task of raising children um, and how complex it is um, and, and and how we need the Holy Spirit to come in there our children are growing uh, Jeremy's eight. Mm-hmm. Nisi uh, Nisi just turned six a few months ago, and Jonathan is turning five in a few days. Um, you know, it's they're growing. They're growing probably too fast for our liking, mm-hmm. but also they're growing um, much faster than we could fathom in our heads. And so the way we have to respond um, as parents um, is, is, is 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 something that has to be done now as we go. You know, mm-hmm. and and if we Take up that empowerment of, of uh, the Holy Spirit. How you know the Bible talks about how we must teach, uh, train up a child um, uh, the way he should go in still young, and then when he grows older, you want to pass him. The Holy Spirit, I think, it's, it's through prayer, like you're saying, and also just to invite him in our family or to invite him in our children's life to invite him, even in us as parents, on how we think, how we see, how we um, how we how we speak. Um, and how we plan, and just to invite him so that he empowers us to do that task, which is seemingly an insurmountable task. Um, what do you think? Yeah, I know you are, you are right there. We need the Holy Spirit, you know. Our days are not so easy. Even the Bible talks about that in Ecclesiastes, that there's a lot of trouble in a man's life. Um, in, in our home, I think as a mother and as a wife, I've also learned to depend on the Holy Spirit a lot. Um, being that it's not something that I always knew how to do, you know, and um, a lot of times I don't have answers to situations or even knowing exactly what to do with the children. They have different personalities. They are going through different stages in life. So I really have had to seek God to help me, more so the Holy Spirit as well, being God, to help me in those uh, instances where I, I'm, I'm not clued up as to what I need to do. And I've seen God intervene. I've seen him coming through. I remember this one time, uh, I don't know, Jeremy was feeling a bit aggressive. He was being aggressive, you know, and you might think that a child is being stubborn. He does not want to listen. But then when you sit down, I, I, I just had to ask the Lord, what do I need to do in this situation? You know, as a parent, sometimes the, you are prompt to, to like, um, not fight back, but to respond in a way that is also aggressive at times, just to get the child to listen. But then when you sit and ask God to intervene, he gives you ideas. And we sit down. With Jeremy had a conversation. That's when I understood he's going through something. There's something happening at school. There's something that he cannot quite 
also handle himself and he needed someone to help him. So I, I believe the Holy Spirit is a very crucial part in our lives, you know, as adults, even in, in our children's lives. Um, you remind me of um, First Corinthians where he's, he talks about First uh, Corinthians 2 verse 10 to 11 says, But God has re revealed them to us through his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit the, of man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God expect, except the Spirit of God. You know, he, he opens up and he because he knows all things. We're being taught that he's all-knowing. Everything that is happening around us, he has knowledge of what is happening. So we need to go back to him and ask him for that guidance, ask him, what should I do? I know a lot of, there's a time where <laughs> in our marriage, you know, at times we have some intense fellowship, you know, <laughs> when we some fellowship and you, you know, you want to say something that may be hurtful, but when I find myself stopping, you know, and asking God to say, Lord, how can I deal with this? You know, it's something that I don't know how to handle it. And in that time of, of withdrawal, the Holy Spirit like drops in words and, oh. and, 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 and um, phrases of how I can express myself, you know, in such a way that when I actually come back and we sit down and talk, you respond in a way and I'm like, oh, wow, Lord, you know, this is amazing. I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> Interesting. Thank you, my so, Lord. <laughs> so I believe he's also working in you, you know, even though we might not be consciously um, thinking about it, but he is working in us and in our hearts. And um, through this journey of life, I believe that he will continue to do great things. Yeah, true, yeah. true. Um, and also, yeah, that's that's a, that's quite a yeah, that's quite a very valid point. Um, and 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 I hope well for our listeners as well that uh, you you also get into this place where we we lean on the Holy Spirit um, to lean on that uh, His empowering His ability to empower us to do the things that we need to do. We have just spoken about just the things in ministry as well as the things in our family. Um, I, I also have quite a few instances, for example, in, in my professional life where, um, you know, somebody has come to me with a complex text problem, which I, I, I don't really probably haven't, have no experience in, if I can put it like that, you know, and then sometimes I, before I uh, disregard them to say, look, I can't assist you, uh, I just take a moment to ponder, to think, and then just to pray, to say, Holy Spirit, particularly in the last few months, um, you know, just to pray, Holy Spirit, how do I deal with this complex situation? All of a sudden, he, he reveals things. He reveals things. He drops things in my head way of the question that I need to ask uh, the particular person I'm assisting uh, of how I need to approach, how I need to explain things, how I need to explain all these complex things, which to a normal person may sound a little bit um, over the board, overboard. Um, but he, he reveals, and you ask the right questions, and you ask the right questions, you get the right information. And in essence, as you move, you realize, oh, Actually, in just perhaps what could have been a complex uh, text matter, which we've taken months and months to resolve, uh, all of a sudden, in a few days, the text man is happy, the text payer is happy. Um, well, hopefully, you get paid. <laughs> um, yeah. But but that's but that's that's how the empowerment of the Holy Spirit comes. He enables us to do things which are up and above and beyond that we ordinarily probably wouldn't have been able to accomplish. Not only that, but he actually enables us to excel and to do well. So you can actually call him. I remember the one time I was praying for my wife. Um, because, well, I, this was actually before um, we did this series, but now um, it, it actually all makes sense now. It actually all adds up, you know, because she was in an environment where she was new, um, sitting with all these experienced people, all those experienced uh, state agents who are talking about this deal and that mega deal and that million dollar, million rand deal and that house and that mansion that they've just sold and three of other, and I'm thinking, wow, wow, here's a young lady who's in an unfamiliar territory and and lo and behold, somebody decided to become Rookie of the Year. For me, it was not Rookie of the Year. It was Estate Agent of the Year. Because the, because the Holy Spirit empowers you. He enables you 
even in that environment to perform and to perform well. Uh, actually, I think that the correct word is to excel uh, and to, to do excellently. Um, you had something that was sort of related to this empowerment uh, that we're talking about, and one of your first points that you wrote there. Um, what was it about? Mm. Mm. Um, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is something that I'm seeing more of, uh, especially these days. Uh, in my work, I meet a lot of people, I talk to a lot of people, and you realize that people are going through a lot of things. And in those times, I get a nudging. I remember Doc was teaching us about the communication communicating with the Holy Spirit where he he impresses on our hearts, you know, in maybe with an emotion or whether with a feeling or a thought or an idea. So in meeting with these different people, people express themselves. They talk about their problems. And I do feel that nice to say, pray for this person. I remember there's a house I went to and I was busy listing the house. The, the wife's mother was not feeling well and she was staying in the bachelor flat so I went to see her and we had a good conversation and I had that nice to say pray for her we did pray for healing uh, a few days later unfortunately she passed on but um, I remember sure. I remember the, looking back in reflection to say you know what I'm so glad I responded to that um, nudge that I had if I did not respond to it, probably I would have regretted that maybe it could have been my prayer that would have saved her, but it was God's timing, I guess. I can give another example. Um, in my work, you have to have a, a lot of properties in order to sell a lot. So I drive uh, quite a number of, of, of times um, around the area looking for properties and a lot of times I look at a house and I'm driving past and I'm saying, hmm, I wonder if these guys would like to sell. Three times I have done that. And in a few days after that, I see a board, another agent's board, right in front of that house. And I kick myself in the foot. I should have gone and spoken to them. I strongly believe it's the Holy Spirit speaking to me, you know, in those instances. I do not believe it's just luck or just a coincidence. I I am now so very um, conscious that he, he does speak to me and I have to listen. One incident that <clears throat> scared me though, um, I had a client call me um, to view a stand and he was sounding very professional, you know. I thought, okay, this guy, he wanted to buy cash the stand. So we made an appointment to go and see the stand. When I met with them, when they drove in at the shopping center where I was waiting, I saw there were three people in the car, but I couldn't recognize the person at the back. I saw two men in front. When we arrived at the stand, then um, I then noticed that there were three men. For some reason, when I came out of my car to show them where the stand was, my heart was beating. And I thought to myself, how can my heart be beating? I've met a lot of people in the area. I, I meet a lot of people every day. My heart cannot just beat for nothing. So they came through. The, the guy who had inquired came to talk to me. And his friend from the back also came out. He was wearing an oversized jacket and he put his and to fix something on his trousers inside the sweater. I noticed this is not just a small thing. It looked like, I don't know, maybe a, <laughs> a gun or something. I'm not sure, but that's what my mind went to. So here I am thinking there are three men here. We are in a public road. People are moving and cars are driving by, but I'm the only woman standing with them. In that moment, I decided I'm not going to walk with them to go and show them exactly where the stand is. I just described to them. So the two of them walked and the other guy stayed in the car. But he kept looking at me in a funny way. So I just called on the name of the Lord. I said, Lord, in my heart, Holy Spirit, be with me. Be with me right now. Please protect me. I don't know what they were planning to do, but... You know, I just had that feeling that my heart cannot just... It's a warning. You know when you want to do something and your heart is, is, is not at peace. You know that this is I mustn't do this or I mustn't walk through this road. 
when they came back from the stand, the other guy came and stood right next to my car door. And the one who had inquired was on the other side. So I'm looking at him, I'm attending to his questions. And then he takes a step forward towards me. And it was a bit uncomfortable, first because of COVID, but also just uh, social distance, you know. So I moved a step back and he made another step towards me. And I realized I'm going to make another step and I'll be closer to the guy behind me. So I swerved on the side and anyway, at the end of the day, um, I just told them what they needed to do, <clears throat> excuse me, and then they walked past, they went to the car. I immediately went into the car, locked the doors and drove all the way home. Even when I got home, my heart was still pounding and I asked the Lord, what do they want to do to me, you know? So I believe in as much as we'll be, we are empowered, you know, to do great things, the Holy Spirit is also there to warn us. He's also there to direct us. In those small moments, you think that, ah, oh, it's just a feeling. Oh, no, it's, you know, I mustn't pick this. I must pick that, you know. It's the Holy Spirit guiding you with those small little things. And at times I was speaking to a friend of mine uh, saying that we expect um, big things like a, a, a show of some sort, you know, to really see that the Holy Spirit is there. But he also speaks to us with a quiet and gentle you know, voice inside our hearts, and we need to respond. We mustn't um, uh, shy it away or, or disregard it just because it's not very audible and we don't see a, a big evidence in front of our eyes. So just an encouragement that, you know, to be sensitive and to know when God is speaking to us and that we must obey. Yeah, and I, I quite agree with you because in all instances of life, wherever we are, whatever we do, he's, he's constantly speaking. Mm -hmm. that's, um, that's one thing that, you know, it's, it's like the parable of the soul. The, the word is always going. He's constantly speaking. He's constantly talking. He constantly wants to um, open our eyes, open our minds, and to reveal things about our surroundings. You know, like that example that you gave. You know, he's revealing things and showing us things. And, um, and, 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 uh, Particularly with people, um, you know, where, where you understand something, where you're feeling something, where you can nudge, and, and, and you ought to listen. So that's a, that's a really, it's a really powerful, um, powerful um, example right there. And, and as we know, communication is two way, you know. Um, and the more we know him, the more we, the more we communicate, or the more he can effectively uh, communicate with us. So you know, like Doc said, we must spend more time you know, just um, with him, knowing him, asking him the presence of the Holy Spirit, etc., yeah. etc. Et you know, um, and uh, perhaps before we get to uh, go to prayer later on, I'm just going to delve into something that Doc spoke about, which is about the anointing. Uh, he called it the Creo, uh, the rubbed in anointing. Uh, and he referred to, there's a verse in Psalm chapter 92, um, I think it's verse 10, if I'm not mistaken. He talks about how uh, my own, he says, you have exalted like a wild ox. He says, I've been anointed with fresh oil. And that anointing there, it's as if it's, you know, he, he, there's a word called Creo, C-H-R-I-O, um, which is a Hebrew word, which, which talks about rubbing in, uh, if I recall well. Um, and I quite like the, that particular message because it was very powerful, the things that he spoke about, how when he rubs in, he restores, he renews, he, I think he used the word reinvigorates, mm -hmm. he, um, um, it, it ensures there's there's perpetual effect. So as a, there's always life in that particular thing. So it gives life to us and what we're doing um, wherever we are. So when we are anointed uh, for for the marketplace, when we are anointed for many years, have to, and because there's a to, he puts us in a place where um, we we've got life within us, and that life is it's as if it's continuously uh, regenerating. You know, if I can put it like that. You know, like like you get injured um, after a few, you know, your skin will come back and cover it up, and it's just, you know, and it's about the same thing, you know, when you, because it rubs in, you're continuously being restored, you're continuously being renewed. And I think that's it's, it's a very key thing, particularly in ministry, yeah. um, because uh, by, by virtue of the lives that we live as Christians, this is what I believe, this is what I've always uh, Clearly, from, from a message from Pastor Kimo that I spoke about, we spoke about white kids. By virtue of the lives that we lead, the uh, people that we are, 
we are bound to get old. We are bound to uh, lose touch, if I can so, so to speak. You know, we are bound to get hurt. We, you know, things happen. We, we get depressed sometimes. You know, we, uh, it affects you mentally. Uh, sometimes you are exhausted. You are really tired. You don't know what to do. You just wake up on one side and <laughs> <laughs> you're like my body is refusing today. I don't even want to go to church. Well, not because you're lazy, but just because you're tired. It's 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 just exhaustion. So I need a bit of this. And so that rub, rubbing in comes in because it ensures that we have perpetual effect. Uh, and that rubbing in is what continuously gives us. So it's as if it's like um, I want to call it like an ongoing restoration. Um, so to speak. So as we go, he's doing things to us. As I go, as I go, whatever I'm about, uh, I'm that wine skin which is continuously being smeared with oil or being massaged with oil and it's being rubbed in. Um, and particularly in that particular verse, that particular chapter, Psalm 92, it goes on to say that the, the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. It says uh, they will grow like a seed on the and plant is in the house of God. And then it says they will still bear fruit in old age. So that's what the anointing does. That the yeah. yeah. anointing that you will still barefoot. Yeah. Even sometimes when you're really tired and you just don't know. Yeah. yeah. And, and he gives that life to you. He just invigorates you. He just comes in and just tickles you and just mm-hmm. gets you going again. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, you, you you might, t- tonight you might go to bed. You know, you've, you, things are heavy, weighing on your mind. You just pray and you submit to him. And then tomorrow you just wake up with this peace with this uh, refreshing uh, feeling that, yeah. you know, he's just done something yeah. and you know he's done something. Yeah. And once you start that day, things just start to happen yeah. because you're there, you're energetic and you've got it all. True. Um, what do you think about that? True. No, I'm, I'm just listening as you are talking. It's, it's, um, it's an amazing feeling, <laughs> you know, when when things are happening because the Holy Spirit is renewing and it's reviving and refreshing, you know. Um, even the verse, as it says that the, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. A palm tree, to see it die and wither, you know, it's it's a rare thing. Or plants do grow and die, but a palm tree really grows and grows and it, it, it's it, brings this beautiful shade, it makes all these fruits, it's an exotic type of plant, you know, and as the Bible is describing that they shall flourish like a palm tree, you know, and they shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon, you know. The Holy Spirit is a critical thing in our lives, we need Him. If we are going to flourish in all aspects of our lives, we need to acknowledge Him and give Him the, the, the... Give him the um, the platform to 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 do what he needs to do in our lives. You know, when you were talking about uh, flourishing and into old age, you remind me of a verse in Ecclesiastes chapter twelve, verse one. He says, "Remember now your Creator in the days of your youth, before the difficult days come, and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them.'" I was just reflecting, I don't want to be like that. The years of difficult days, I'm assuming, is old age. When you're not old and you're looking back, when you're looking back in your life and you're thinking, what did I do with my life? You know, I don't want to have those feelings of regret that I did not fully experience the Holy Spirit in my life. I did not fully engage with Him and engage in the things of God whilst I still had the strength whilst I still had the, the life in me to do what I needed to do. So here it's encouraging. Remember now, your creator in the days of your youth. So this is the time. This is the time it's to the time have to those encounters time. with the Holy Spirit. This is the time to say, I remember Doc was teaching us about faith. Faith is now. It's not tomorrow. It's not yesterday. Today is when I've been, I'm believing for those encounters. I'm believing tomorrow as I start work, I am prepared, Lord. I am expecting the encounters in my life so and the more we, we we experience and see the workings of the Holy Spirit in our lives the more our faith is strengthened you know you even go out with the mandate to say today I'm 
ready to pray for someone for healing. Today, I'm ready to pray for someone who needs uh, an encouraging word, who needs a breakthrough, you know, because you are ready. The, 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 the workings of the Holy Spirit and, and, and your faith building as you are, you know, moving forward in, in, in your life, it empowers you, it gives you that strength, you know, that refreshing and renewing, you know, continuously, continuously to, keep, to keep doing the work of the Lord. I, th I think it's such a... It's such a phenomenal and key thing, and this is um, this is true basically for even not just in ministry, but in, in just life in general. Because yeah. look, <laughs> the enemy is not going to relax. Yeah. The devil is not going to relax on your family. The devil is not going to relax on your business. The devil is not going to relax on our marriage. He's not going to relax on anything. He's he's always going to be wanting to do something, to take something, to win something, to take something off you, to. Um, get you sidetracked to get you off of your path. He's always gonna try. And 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 that process of those attacks and those bombardings, you know, uh, you you're obviously bound to you know and and, 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 and in such um, that's where this whole thing comes in, where the Holy Spirit is there. Mm -hmm. Like you're saying, you know, he's just refreshing. As you wake up yesterday you had the challenges, mm -hmm. you went through whatever you went through, you prayed, you submitted to him. And then he just did the work, and then you wake up the next morning mm -hmm. and ready to go again. Um, and uh, yeah, because he has done that work um, that that he always does. And and I quite like that. Um, in addition to that, one of the things that that particular word, um, the Creole, is it's also the word where the word charismatic, which we now use, or charisma, uh, which we now use called charisma, which it's, it then makes you attractive. So when it's wrapped in, not only is it restoring. Not only is it strengthening, not only is it reinvigorating or gives life, mm. uh, but it's giving it in such a way that it makes you attractive. Yes, people want to yes. know. So people what want to know. Mm. And, and I like, because in, in that then it means whatever you are facing, it actually now becomes a testimony for someone else. Wow. Um, but not only that, but also people can actually see the work of the Holy Spirit, how what he's doing yes. in you and said, and say, <laughs> that's just not it's something, something by itself. No, it's not yes. just Becky there by itself. Yes. It's, there has to be something else. And you want to know. And not only that, but also think about just even in business, you know, where if you're flourishing and you're doing well and you are restored and you have a smile and you have a beam mm -hmm. and people will become attracted to people sure. generally are attracted to yes. good things. Yes. Um it's said that news focuses mostly on the bad. But people are naturally attracted to and they want to get involved or be engaged with people who are good and people who do good things. So as a result, it's just to trust God. Like for example, in your particular case, you know, if you just to pray to say if you walk into a house because the Holy Spirit makes you attractive, you get that charisma of the Holy Spirit, He makes you attractive. Uh, I remember you were saying to the other one, I think there was a couple who said we don't want anyone else to sell our property. We want you, so we're going to wait for you. So they say, I'm going to sign that uh, yes. exclusive mandate. You mm. got I'm going to sign that because I want you to sell. Why? Because the Holy Spirit has given you that attractive. He's made you attractive. Mm. You know? um, yeah, I, I see it even in my own um, way. You know, just the things that I do and the people that I meet, just like you. Uh, someone will say to me, oh, are you doing Texas? I'm like, yeah, two assist people here and there. He says, ah, okay, I had this guy and this guy who was doing it for me, but I, I just feel like I, I need to give it to you. you know? mm -hmm. uh, most of my clients have been by relationship with the people that I know. Mm -hmm. um, they're not a lot, uh, mm -hmm. obviously, because it's something that I'm doing part-time, um, and so I have to manage it well. But those very few, they'll say, ah, I like you. you know, mm -hmm. We meet, uh, or, or my director introduces me to someone who's got just a problem that's to be sorted, and he says, as soon as he's gone, he says, oh, I don't know. I just like you. Something I'm thinking, different about you. Okay, what did I do? Hey, but I'm just another 40 year old who's getting bold, and you know. Um, but really, apart from all that, the Holy Spirit makes us attractive. Mm. And that attractiveness, uh, if you're listening, uh, it's something that you should work on because mm. it makes you attractive. Business will come to you. Uh, clients will want to get involved with you. People in social circles will want to be getting involved with you. People want to speak to you. They want to speak to your family. They want to know what it is with your children. Um, you know, uh, our daughter was playing netball. 
um, yesterday. Uh, you remember when the teacher was saying she wants to make her the, the net bowler of the year or something? I don't remember what exactly mm-hmm. she used. Uh, but yeah, like the pro is in. What is that? It's because this little girl who's just there in the class, right. who's been attending netball like every other girl, mm-hmm. um, is just attracted. Mm-hmm. That's just the presence of the presence. Holy Spirit in her life. It's yes. the presence of the Holy Spirit in her life. Mm-hmm. And hey, people are just attracted to it. They mm-hmm. want to be. Anyway, would you but like you, to yes, I actually was just thinking, you talk about um, the experiences you have with now, but I don't know if you remember when you got your job, the one you had in Foreign Machine. Remember, the company was looking for a specific candidate. I remember you were saying that they wanted uh, a Zimbabwean who had a permit, who was currently in Johannesburg. And your CV was the only CV that popped up on CV People Africa. And you were the only candidate that went for that. Or oh, there were other people who went for the interview. But you fit the criteria that they were looking for. I see the presence of the Holy Spirit right there. Because what are the odds that the whole of Africa, CV People Africa, your CV is the only one that comes up. You know, I see the evidence of you know, the Holy Spirit encounters even from all those years back. So it's 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 imperative. We mustn't we mustn't stay out of the presence of the Holy Spirit. We need him. We need him for our victories, you know, we need him for the success in life. We need him for every aspect and everything that we desire, you know, in our lives. And more so, you know, there are times where um where We've lost our loved ones, you know, even coming from the COVID um, um, period, pandemic, pandemic yeah. yeah. There were times where we even have lost um, our beloved, and we see the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, where he has just come to comfort, he has just come just to embrace and just to to be with us, you know. He says, the Lord Jesus said, I'll send you a helper. He has really been our helper, you know, in those very difficult times. And which is why we, we really need him. We really need him in our lives. And he is our... We just, we just need to pick that job, right? My recollection is that the interview was really hard. When I came out, <laughs> I just thought to myself, I said, God, I didn't apply for this job. They came to me. <laughs> you remember they came to me. I, I didn't apply for the job. They, came, they found me. I don't know how they found me. Uh, and so the interview was very hard. And I, thought, I didn't ask for this. Um, you know, but I said, I answered as truthfully as I could and as well as, you know, and unbeknown to me, uh, I was their best. Best. So, so uh, um, well, I mean, praise God for that. Um, well, just as we close, um, I, I believe um, I believe one of the things that we, we we would like to see in this day and age is just the evidence of the presence and the working of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. The evidence, not just um, amongst uh, or not just to be seen amongst believers, but that evidence to be seen by unbelievers and our yeah. that they will actually look and say, "There's something different about this person." And I believe that gives us that gives us that attraction. So, so um, we're going to pray today, um, and, and we pray for ourselves. We're going to pray uh, for you as well, uh, the viewers who are joining us uh, this 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 afternoon, just to pray and to trust God that even as we have been on this journey of the we were learning about the Holy Spirit, we've been taught about the Holy Spirit, that we begin to see this thing that we've been taught about. We begin to see the evidence of the working power of the Holy Spirit in our lives mm-hmm. and the evidence um, of the things that he shows us, his empowerment, his attractiveness, his renewal, his strengthening, his invigoration, if I can call it like that, um, in a way he's continuously doing something. Um, uh, well, shall we pray?
So Father, we thank you uh, this afternoon in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your presence, Holy Spirit. We thank you for your presence, Holy Spirit. We thank you for this uh, this series that we are on where we are learning about you in the name of Jesus. As we submit ourselves to you, submit our church, submit each and every person who is listening to this broadcast in the name of Jesus. We pray for the evidence of the working of the Holy Spirit. As we get closer to you, Holy Spirit, as we learn more about you, as we fellowship with you, as we work with you, as we communicate with you, speak with you, and you speak to us, you show us things that the Lord the evidence of the Holy Spirit will be so tangible. Yes. The evidence of the presence and the working of the Holy Spirit will be so tangible in our lives. Yes. Will be so tangible in our children's lives. The things that we do in our businesses and work and ministry will be so tangible for the viewers in the name of Jesus. Each and every family, those representing in our church, we pray in this day that Lord, let it be known that these are led by the Spirit of God. For you said, you went as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons and daughters of God, the mature sons. So we trust in you and believe in God for this maturity. Of those who are led by the Spirit, we walk in the Spirit, we think by the Spirit, we perceive things by the Spirit in the name of Jesus. We see, hear, and do in Jesus' name. And as they do so, that you show yourself present, that you show yourself powerful, and, and that it will be evident of the work that you'll be doing in our lives yes, and in their lives in Jesus', Jesus name. name. So we submit to you this afternoon, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, thank you. Thank you um, for uh, this uh, really fruitful discussion. And thank you um, to everyone who joined us this afternoon for the Pulse of 107. Uh, we pray that you have a very good evening, a very blessed week ahead in Jesus' name. God bless you all. Won't ever let you down. He got you. His love is amazing. His grace is brand new every day. And if you ask, you receive abundantly, abundantly. And it's flavor.